Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Working from home, protect your sensitive data with an extra layer of security at expressvpn.com slash inside. Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. So E3 2021, it's in the books, guys. Now, time for the all-important question. Who won? Who had the best showing? Who had the best presentation? Who knocked everybody's socks off? And the winners are... Square Enix and Capcom. Great job, guys. Just kidding. Woo, those are bad. All right, let's see what people are actually saying on the internet. Obviously, Sony didn't participate, so that was a huge absence. A lot of people think that Microsoft was the big winner of the show. Editors from IGN, GameSpot, PC Gamer, Games Radar, Game Bonfire, and some other places all voted that Microsoft's Xbox and Bethesda showcase was the best presentation overall. And it was definitely good. They showed off the big Starfield trailer reveal with the announcement that it's coming next year. We also got a deep dive into Halo Infinite. That's due out this holiday season. And the announcement of Forza Horizon 5. That's coming out in November. That was actually voted by the editors as the most anticipated game overall of the show. It definitely looked cool. CNET also thought Microsoft won because of Game Pass. Now, they also made the announcement previously that it's going to be available on browsers and mobile soon. Meanwhile, a lot of the big upcoming games will be available on the service on day one. That includes a ton of good stuff. Psychonauts 2, Back from Blood, Forza Horizon 5, Halo Infinite, Starfield, and Stalker 2. They also said that Hades and Among Us are coming to Game Pass as well, so it continues to be an insane value. Metro UK also felt like Xbox One, but they said the show suffered from being online. And CNN awarded Game Pass its Best of Show Award. Is that like the dog? Like it got, is it like a little fluffy dog with like ribbons all around it? They wrote with 27 out of the 30 games revealed at the Xbox E3 showcase coming to Game Pass at launch Microsoft's gaming subscription service positioned itself as an even better value for those looking to enjoy as many titles as possible without blowing a ton of money. Okay, and I agree, Game Pass is great, but it's not a great sign for E3 when the best in show is just good value, not a specific game. Microsoft did get a lot of praise. Nintendo got some accolades too. Their big showstopper was more footage from Breath of the Wild 2, along with a release date of 2022. So that could be six months from now. It could be a year and a half from now. Who knows? Other headlines from Nintendo included a new 2D Metroid for the first time in almost 20 years. Woo! Metroid Dread. I liked it. Plus a new WarioWare game. They're also remaking the first two Advance Wars games. Yes! I'm excited and I wrote this, I already knew it, but just reading it again gets me excited. Oh, and they're making a Zelda game and watch. That's about it for the 35th anniversary of Zelda. And Kazuya from Tekken is coming to Smash Ultimate. But no Switch Pro announcement, no update on Metroid Prime 4. As IGN said, no other company can inspire the same wild speculation that Nintendo does, but they still had a quote, great direct, even if they didn't make all our Nintendo dreams come true. Yeah, they didn't make my dream come true of any new info on Bayonetta 3, but maybe one day. Maybe the big show stealer though of E3 was the long awaited reveal of Elden Ring that got a ton of praise. It did look great and it's coming out January 21st of next year. So not too far away. As for the overall winner, Giant Bomb pulled its community about who had the best presentation. Microsoft was the clear favorite with more than 70% of the vote followed by Nintendo with about 16%. I also like the Wholesome Games Direct. Uh, Devolver Digital as usual did a great job. Sony's absence though, definitely a huge factor. It felt like Xbox and Nintendo were trying the hardest out of everybody. I give Capcom a little bit of a pass. They put out Monster Hunter Rise this year. Also Resident Evil Village. Those are good, but boy, it just didn't seem like they had too much great stuff coming in the future. Overall, I thought the show was okay. You know, you look at it from top to bottom. We got more info on Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild 2, Starfield, Stalker 2, Far Cry 6. That was cool. Shin Megami Tensai 5 plus a new Metroid game. It's not bad. It's not bad. I feel like though, overall, I think this year and next we're going to start to see the full effects of COVID on the games industry and how badly it has hurt production. So that might account somewhat for the lack of sizzle. All right, we'll get to the rest of the stories in just a second. But first, let's talk more about our old friends, ExpressVPN. Guys, I want to give them a big shout out for sponsoring Roundup. You guys know ExpressVPN. You know they protect your data. You know they funnel it through an encrypted server. You know that without a VPN, your internet service provider can see all your online activity and sell it to the highest bidder and probably cheap bidder too. There's nothing stopping ISPs from spreading your data around like dandelion seeds. To anybody who wants to track you, that's no good. You know that you need ExpressVPN. So what are you waiting for? 
I do it because I don't like people seeing what I'm doing on the internet. If I want to listen to a Taylor Swift song, that's my business. That's not a cheap bidder's business. That's my business. If I want to watch 80s glam metal, yeah, I'm going to do it. It, it, That's not any secret, though. You guys know that. ExpressVPN masks your IP address, even on an open Wi-Fi signal. It hides your location, so no getting doxxed when you game. That's good. ExpressVPN is the top-rated VPN provider chosen by CNET, The Verge, Wired, and even Tech Radar. so get on it. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash inside or clicking the link in the description below. Thank you to ExpressVPN. All right, on to the rest of the stories. Good news if you own a base PS4 and need a slideshow to watch. Cyberpunk 2077 is coming back, baby! CD Projekt Red announced that the game will return to the PlayStation Store next Next week, starting June 21st, you know the story behind Cyberpunk, you guys. It released in a terrible state, especially on base PS4s and Xbox Ones. Its performance was awful. Sony took the highly unusual step of taking it down from the store. Full refunds were offered and it became quite the cautionary tale of a modern AAA game that was released too soon. Hopefully it's in better shape now. And speaking of E3, a notable absence from the event was Everwild, the open world adventure game from Rare, which was weird because Rare had previously shown off trailers for the game at the last two big Microsoft events. Well, the reason it wasn't shown at E3 is because uh, it's been completely rebooted. That's according to Video Games Chronicle, who said that last year's departure of creative director Simon Woodrow led to a complete overhaul of the game's design and direction. There have also been significant changes to the game's senior leadership. VGC reported that the game's design has been restarted from scratch. Rare's most senior creative, Greg Mayles, is in charge of the reboot. They are targeting a release of 2024, but... Don't hold your breath. We've got release dates for the MOBA Pokemon Unite. Uh, release months. It's coming to Switch next month sometime in July. Mobile versions will be here in September. They also said that cross-platform play between Switch and mobile is planned. Now, the game was announced last year. It's a little bit different from traditional MOBAs because in Unite, you score points by capturing wild Pokemon in the field. That makes sense. And of course, you can level up, you can evolve, you can learn new moves, all that good stuff. It's part of a somewhat crowded release schedule for Pokemon in the coming months. The remakes of Diamond and Pearl, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are headed to the Switch later this year, and the action RPG Legends Arceus is due out in January of next year. Bad news for people still playing GTA Online on their PS3 or Xbox 360. Well, the bad news is they're still playing on the PS3 or Xbox 360 for starters. Just kidding, I like my PS3 still. But GTA Online is shutting down for those consoles at the end of the year. Rockstar said those versions will officially shut down on December 16th, including website stat tracking via the Rockstar Games Social Club. They also said that shark cash cards for GTA Online will no longer be sold for the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions after September 15th of this year. They said though that the changes will have no impact on access or progress in story mode for any of the titles on either platform. So that is good. All right, time for our five second review. I quit during the first tutorial. Nice try, school. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Ender Lilies is a dark fantasy 2D action RPG about unraveling the mysteries of a destroyed kingdom on this sorrowful journey. Encounter horrific enemies against whom a moment of inattention could be fatal. Overcome these hardships and seek the truth with the help of fallen knights. It comes to Switch June 22nd. Labyrinth City, Pierre the Maze Detective. Adapted from the best-selling children's book series, Pierre the Maze Detective. Play as Pierre in this adventure puzzle game and recover the stolen Maze Stone. Journey through breathtakingly hand-drawn illustrations. Meet eccentric characters and solve puzzles to save Opera City. Comes to BC June 22nd. Lego Builder's Journey is an atmospheric, geometric puzzle game that asks us to sometimes follow the instructions and to sometimes break the rules. It comes to PC and Switch June 22nd. Super Magbot, a precise 2D platformer with a twist. No jumping. Master your magnetic powers to beat each level with speed and skill. Enjoy classic 16-bit gaming vibes. Tackle challenging achievements and compete for global leaderboard supremacy along the way. It comes to PC and Switch June 22nd. Fallen Knight, take the role of an elite knight and battle your way through action-packed levels with intense sword fighting gameplay in this neoclassic side-scrolling action platformer. Save the city from a deadly terrorist organization hell-bent on exposing the truth you were sworn to protect. 
It comes to PC June 23rd. Out of Line, a unique adventure game filled with beautiful puzzles, all hand-drawn in original 2D style. Out of Line follows the adventures of San in a quest to escape the factory that was once home. Dive into a story set in a mysterious world that is revealed through multiple chapters. It comes to PC June 23rd. Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX. A legend returns in stunning new detail with Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX. This time he tells everyone to suck it. Fire up your power bracelet and relive a platforming classic alongside new modes, levels, and features. It comes to the Sega Master System. Just kidding. PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, June 24th. Legend of Mana is the HD remaster of Legend of Mana. Set off on a journey to find the mystical mana tree seen in a dream before discovering <gasps> the world map is empty. During your travels, you'll acquire special artifacts. Place these wherever you'd like on the map to bring towns and dungeons to life and advance the story. It comes to PC, PS4, and Switch, June 24th. Scarlet Nexus. Choose between Yuito and Kasane, elite psionics, each armed with a talent in psychokinesis and their own reason to fight. Complete both of their stories to unlock all the mysteries of a brain punk future caught between technology and psychic abilities. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One, June 25th. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 play the fully remastered Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 in one epic collection rebuilt from the ground up in incredible HD. Skate as the legendary Tony Hawk and the original pro roster plus new pros. Listen to songs from the era-defining soundtrack along with new music. Hit insane trick combos with the iconic handling of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series. It comes to the Switch June 25th. And finally, Mario Golf Super Rush. Hit the green with up to four players locally or online and golf with familiar Mushroom Kingdom characters. Modes range from standard golf to the energetic speed golf and an RPG-like golf adventure in story mode. Intuitive motion or button controls, a shot gauge that adapts to the curve of the course and other new features make it easy for both new players and seasoned pros to drive and putt with power. It comes to the Switch June 25th. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. I hope you're having a great weekend. We'll see you soon.